Uh, there we go. Got all through that. Uh, turn in your Bibles to Second Peter. That's where we're going to be. And if you have gotten to know me at all, you know where we're going to be in Second Peter because this is liter- This is one of my favorite passages. I was about to say literally, but you know it's kind of redundant to say literally. This is one of my favorite passages. So influential in my life. I've preached on it before, and I thought at the start of the year that we should look at this passage again as we move into a whole new year here in 2022. I'm going to pray. We're going to dive right in. Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you that your word speaks to us and your word changes us. So as we look at this passage, change us, God. Give us your grace and your love and your mercy as we dive into the word. In your name, amen. Well, all right, church, here we go. We are going to be in Second Peter. Let me pull up my sermon notes. <clears throat> I'm going to read through the passage. We're going to start in verse 3. And then once I'm done reading through the passage, we're going to just go right through it. And again, few texts have been as encouraging to me in my life than this text in particular. So 2 Peter 1, starting in verse 3. Here we go. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted a, granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, virtue with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with steadfastness, steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, brotherly affection with love. And here's where, here's this, this next verse is where we get to, I think, how this helps us move in to 2022. And is really a great passage to anchor ourselves here on the first Sunday of the year. For if these qualities that we just mentioned are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers. Now, I know so many women are part of the church. You know, the the church is about men and women. Uh, So some Bible translations kind of emphasize more the brothers. And, you know, you can really look at this and say, um, therefore, family, therefore, brothers and sisters. Be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. Well, man, I want to succeed in 2022. Not succeed in just life, but succeed spiritually in growing in my walk with Jesus. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you, verse 11, an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Man, what a great passage. Uh, This past summer, I took... Um, All three of my boys to summer camp. We went to Spencer Lake in central Michigan. It was phenomenal. And there was so much packing to do for that time. All three boys, uh, two two of my boys going to youth camp. Uh, My youngest, AJ, was going to kids camp. And we had to pack so many things. There's a whole packing list that was needed so that we could succeed at camp. And, And we went over that list multiple times of like, all right, do we have everything we need? Yes, we got it. Yes, we got the bag packed. We loaded the van. Our van was just, I mean, it was packed to the gills. We even put this big thing up top, a rocket box, and packed the rocket box full uh, before we went to camp. And we had, um, and then we drove up to Spencer Lake and we had a great time. Now, it wasn't just that we stuck to the packing list, but it was also that I knew that while we were there, if there's anything that we needed, that I could just take our car and I could go and get it. And the feeling of being safe, of taking care of is something that um, that I think all of us are looking for. The feeling of, am I ready to go into this new year is something that we are all looking for. In fact, look at the news and you look at all the self-help news articles and what are they? Like, hey, here's Here's five steps to a more fit body in 2022. Here's a great diet for 2022. Here's how you organize your schedule better in 2022. I was watching the news the other day, and they had this whole segment on time blocking. 
It's a whole different way of blocking out your schedule. And they had all these you know, testimonials of people saying, time blocking changed my life and I'm so much better. Now, I'm not downplaying time blocking. I use time blocking. What I'm saying is all around us, people are bombarding us with a message that is, here's how you, in your own power and your own strength, can succeed in 2022. And I don't want to minimize all the ways in which we need to do well professionally, do well with our family, do well in all the different ways with our health in 2022. But as Christians, before we succeed financially, before we succeed with our health, before we succeed in our job, or even before we succeed as moms and dads and brothers and sisters, let's do well at just being a child of God. And how can we do well at being a child of God, at being loved by God? Well, I think this passage at the Second Peter really speaks to how we can do well as children of God. So, here we go. Let's dive into our passage. Uh, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. My first point is that God the Father, as we start this new year, has given us everything that we need for life and godliness. Now, I understand there are practical things you may think you need. I need a new car. I need a new computer. I need a new this. Fill in the blank. But what we're talking about here is, are you, do you have at your disposal, at your fingertips, everything you need to succeed spiritually as a child of God this year? And God's word is saying to you, to us, yes, his divine power, the Father's divine power is granted to us everything that we need, everything for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Now, if God has given us everything that we need, then why is it that I woke up this morning and felt like I had lack spiritually? Well, because a part of our laying hold of this promise is actually is actually remembering the promises of God. There's there's a there's a process here of of reading 2 Peter 1.3 1.3 and realizing God has given to me, deposited in me through the power of the Holy Spirit, everything that I need for life and godliness. But the way I lay hold of everything that I need for life and godliness is by actually being in a, in a continued deeper and deeper relationship with God. It's not just a one-time moment where I repent of my sins, confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I'm saved. Now I have access to everything I need for life and godliness, but just access doesn't mean that I've actually um, laid, laid hold of it. We just experienced something really striking that shows this point, right? We experienced Christmas. And at Christmas time, you got all these gifts under the tree. And God has essentially said, every gift you could ever want, everything that you could ever want spiritually, I've given to you. And many times what happens is we read that promise and just like we look at gifts under a tree, we don't unwrap them. Now you may say, Pastor Stephen, I would never look at gifts under a tree and not unwrap them. When it's Christmas Day, I'm unwrapping those gifts. Totally. And that's why I bring this point up because I think for all of us, someone gives us a gift. We don't say like, oh my gosh, this is a great gift. This is this is going to fulfill my needs and I'm, and you love me and you care for me and then put the gift aside and never unwrap it. But I think spiritually, this is what happens to us so often, that God has communicated anything you need, anything. In fact, not just anything you need, but every single thing you will need throughout your spiritual life, God is ready to give you. God has already gifted to you. And yet you need to receive the gift and then unwrap it and then use it. Which would be the next thing, right? Around Christmas time, you get this great gift, you unwrap it, you're like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I'm so glad I got this gift. Well, have you unboxed it? Have you actually like experienced the gift or did you just unwrap it and look at it? Point, uh, this is a side point here. I love unboxing things. I don't know about you, but there are a few things I enjoy 
more than unboxing. My wife will get things and I'll say, can I unbox it for you? I don't know what it is about unboxing, like the crinkling of the paper, the, the opening of the box. And ah, I just love it. One of, one of my favorite companies to unbox things for is Apple. Now, I, you guys know I'm an Apple nerd. I like Apple products, but they do such great boxing of things. And when you unbox stuff, it's just, it's so satisfying. And when you use the product, satisfying as well. So this first point, God has given us grace. He's given us everything we need for life and godliness. Receive the gift. Unwrap the gift. Use the gift. Is there something that you need this year spiritually that you didn't have last year? What God is communicating through 2 Peter 1.3 is that the gift is ready to be received. You have not because you ask not. So ask. And watch as God is always ready to give. He's not going to give it to you because you've done really well this past year. He's not going to give it to you because it's the beginning of the year and you haven't messed up at all. He's not going to give it to you because you're better than other people. He's going to give it to you because why? He loves you. He's your father and he loves you and he wants to give you grace. So receive those gifts. Everything you need for life and godliness has been given to you this year. Uh, point number two, uh, the son shows us grace. The father gives us grace. The son shows us grace. And we see this section here where God, um, where, where the Peter, the apostle Peter, is communicating uh, all of these different virtues. And this can come off like, you know what, you're going to need to try hard and do better if you want to succeed. So before we dive into this, I want you to see that Jesus is the model for each of these qualities. And Jesus is the means for each of these qualities. Take that in. Jesus is not only the model for each quality as this goes, as we move through it, but he's also the means by which we can get these qualities in our life. God is not interested in you trying harder and doing better to get these qualities. God wants you to go to his son, Jesus, and receive these qualities from him. And once you've received it, then you can work out the qualities. But don't try to don't try to get them without Jesus. That's not Christianity. Christianity is I go to Jesus. Jesus gives me the things that I need and then I work it out with fear and trembling. I get better and better by the power of the Holy Spirit, which is point 3, we're not there yet. So just take that in. Jesus is the model for each one of these qualities, but Jesus is also the means for each one of these qualities. Last thing before we look at the qualities is this. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus, then I would implore you, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and be saved that Jesus lived the life you couldn't live, died on the cross in your place for your sins, rose again after three days, defeated your greatest enemies of Satan's sin and death. He did that because he loves you, and you could be saved right now. Don't, don't try to get these qualities without Jesus. Now, let's dive into the qualities. Here we go. We have virtue. We have knowledge. We have self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection. And then finally, we have love. Now, what, what is, what's, what's God talking about with the virtue here? What, what God is talking about with virtue is he's talking about courage. And one of the characters in the Bible we see over and over again is Joshua. Joshua has great courage. He says many times, be strong and courageous. Supplement your faith with virtue. Virtue is, it's not, many times we look at virtue as um, a very virtuous person, uh, but I want, I want you to see that virtue is, is really a courageous person, stands for their principles, knows what their principles are. Now, the next one is knowledge. So if you want to be courageous, um, virtuous, virtue leads Virtue with knowledge. How can you be courageous? Well, you, you're courageous when you know the promises of God. And Paul knew the promises of God. The Apostle Paul, over and over again, one of the greatest men of God who's, who's lived. I can't wait to meet him in heaven. And, and how do we get the promises of God? Read God's word. So often people are thinking, well, I got to go to a Bible reading plan in the new year. I need to, pastor said I need to read my Bible more. Yes, you should get a Bible reading plan for 2022. Yes, you should be be reading your Bible, but not because 
your your mom or dad's going to love you more or because your pastor is going to be like, yay, you read your Bible more or because God's going to love you more. It's because God already loves you. And he wants to empower you with his promises, his great and precious promises. Now, the next, the next virtue or the next um, thing that we see is self-control. Self-control comes when we choose to be courageous. We, we choose to know the promises of God. We then have power within us to do, to do the right and virtuous thing, the courageous thing, and not the wrong thing. Self-control, empowered by the Holy Spirit. How many things in our world would be different? How many things in your life and my life would be different if I chose self-control over being out of control? So much. And in the 2022, I want to be a more courageous person. I want to be a more knowledgeable person in the promises of God. I want to be more self controlled. Then the next thing, steadfastness. To be steadfast, meaning I don't want to just start the year strong right now on this Sunday, January 2nd, and then have it fizzle out. I want to be steadfast. I want to listen to the promises of God, hear what God has said, and then move through this year with a sense of determination. And God wants that for all of us, steadfastness, that we won't be moved by whatever happens around us, right? I think of this next year and COVID waning and all of us saying, we're meeting on Sundays, we're doing worship, we're doing our small groups, we're reaching the city, we're loving people. We're going to be steadfast this year. In what ways are you going to be steadfast this year? The next thing, godliness. And godliness, what, what this means is, um, and Moses is one of the great examples of this, is that uh, those of us who love God would not only um, act differently, but we would look different. There's a way that we look different and act different. And when, when the passage here talks about godliness, it, it doesn't mean that we would be, um, you know, like super powered like Jesus is, but that we would, would be more godly, we'd be more holy, we'd be more set apart. People would see a difference in us than they do in other people. Next up, we have brotherly affection brotherly affection, that we're a part of a family. And when you look at brotherly affection, um, it, it's saying, I acknowledge as a Christian that I'm a part of a family. So why is it that I want to join a small group? Why is it that this Sunday when we're virtual, my heart is broken, even though I'm still preaching and we're still, we're still doing something to be together? I want to be together in person. But I also want to love the city that we live in. And so we, we made a hard call to be virtual, but I can't wait to be in person and just keep being in person for the rest of the year. Why? Because I want to be with God's family. It's not because I need to see a bunch of people in seats. It's not because it's, a, it's this rote ritual thing where now um, God loves me more because I come to church. No, I want to be with God's family. I want people in my home. I want to be on Sunday morning with God's people. Brotherly affection. Are you a part of the family of God? Are you embracing the family of God and being with the family of God? Come next Sunday. Come the Sunday after. Let's be the family of God. Come on January 30th on Sunday night to the worship night. Do the, um, the, uh, the blood drive on January 31st. If you haven't joined a small group this year, join a small group. Join a community group. I think, yeah, that's what we call them here at The Journey. Some churches that Ben have called them small groups or community groups. So we have journey community groups. Join a community group. And then finally, uh, once you've had virtue, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection, then crown all of that with what? Love. In all the ways that I fail my family, sin against my kids or my wife or my friends, it's mostly that I fail to love. And this year in 2022, how much better would my year be? How, how well do I start when I start with love? Over all of these things, courage, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection, if I put love in all of these things, that honors God, it blesses me, gives me great joy. And if you lay hold of these qualities, you will be fruitful and effective. But if you choose, now again, I don't want to say all the other things that our culture is saying be good at. You got to be a good, you want to be a good mom, be a good dad, be a good businessman, be a good employee, be, be good at the things you're going to be good at. But before you're good, 
at those lesser things. Be good at the things God's called you to. And what he said is, if you are, if you do well in these qualities, virtue, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection, and love, you will always be fruitful and effective this year. Fruitful and effective spiritually. And if you're doing well spiritually, connected as a child of God, empowered by God, working miracles by God's power, that, that flows into every other thing you're trying to do. And I have no doubt that if we do this as a community, we won't only succeed spiritually, but we'll see us succeeding in our city as well and in other parts of our lives. Before we get to point three, we see in this section the tension of God's sovereignty and goodness and our powerful responsibility. God is going to work things out for his goodwill and his pleasure in us, but he's also given us this opportunity. He's said, here's all the gifts. Take them, unwrap them, use them. So I don't want you to see this as all your powerful responsibility. I also want you to see God working in you at the same time with this. Now, here's point three. The Spirit enables us to feel grace, the Father. The Father gives us grace. The Son shows us grace. The Spirit enables us to feel grace. Verse 10, be diligent, walk in the Spirit, you'll never fail. And then verse 11, we are given an entrance into the kingdom of God because we belong in heaven. Be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. If you practice these qualities, you'll never fail. How do you confirm your calling and election? You show that the Spirit of God is in you and you are working the power of the Holy Spirit out in your life. Philippians 2.12 says this, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. God wants us, as we start this year, to have a sense of fear and trembling, that we could be unfruitful and ineffective. Why would we want to be unfruitful and ineffective when God has given us everything we need for life and godliness? So the Spirit is the one that enables us to to feel this grace, that we are diligent and we walk in the Spirit every day, being full of the Holy Spirit. Never see this as works-based. Always see it as God has saved you. God has empowered you and he's called you, called all of us to work this out in our lives. What's this? Work out these qualities. Work out a life of grace. You have access right now to all these things and you don't feel it. Why? Because you haven't received the gift. You haven't opened it. You haven't then used the gift. And this side of heaven, we get the opportunity to unwrap these gifts and then use them, give gifts to other people. Once we're in heaven, we're going to have all the gifts and we're going to be living with God for all of eternity in the new heavens and the new earth. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait for it. But right now we get a special grace that in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of the struggle we're going to have, this year, which I don't want to lie to you. I want to say there's going to be great things this year, but there's also going to be struggles this year. And that reality, knowledge, knowing there's going to be struggles, but knowing God has given us everything we need for life and godliness means this side of heaven, use this grace, receive this grace. So in closing, the father has given us grace. His power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. The Son shows us grace over and over again. When you when you aren't measuring up to these qualities in this passage, don't get discouraged. Be humble, repent, and receive from Jesus the power the, and, and look at him as the model for these qualities. What did, what did we say in point two? Jesus is the model for each quality. But Jesus is also the means for each quality, not not us. And then finally, the Spirit enables us to feel grace. His presence gives us all we need to get through today. God said, seek first his kingdom and righteousness today, and all these things will be added to you. So I just want to encourage you. Don't get overwhelmed with thinking about everything that's going to be happening this next year. Let's do well today. And once we're succeeding today spiritually, let's move then into Look at how faithful God's going to be moving 
forward. And I believe 2022 is going to be a great year for the journey. 2021 was a great year. Watch as 2022, we see not only success in businesses and families and in our city, but we see deeper spirituality. We see people coming to Jesus. We see God working miracles in us and through us. I believe God's kingdom is going to come in really powerful ways this year through us as we receive from God the gifts that he's already given us, as we unwrap those gifts and as we use them for his glory and our joy. I love you, church. And and I'm I'm so thankful that you joined us today for this, um, this virtual service. And next Sunday, get ready. The book of Hebrews starts next Sunday, January 9th. I can't wait for it. And and I pray the Lord would bless you richly. So I'm going to pray for us right now. God, I pray you bless the Journey Church, bless families, bless individuals, Lord, bless kids. I pray healing over those who are sick because I know so many who are sick. I pray, Lord, encouragement, those who need encouragement. Lord, I pray against the enemy, his servants, their works and effects, which would even right now want to discourage people to think they need to be thinner, to eat better, to do any of the practical things in order to please you. God, you're already pleased with us. You already love us. And you've given us everything we need for life and godliness. And so, Lord, before we before we go into our day, I want to acknowledge we are your children and you've given us everything we need and we receive your gifts right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Will the Lord bless you and keep you. May his countenance shine upon you and bring you peace. I love you, church. I will see you next Sunday at the Goodman Center.